Who would like to start? Brendan, talk about your book. Brendan, talk about your book. <laughs> oh, okay. He diffused the book. There you go. Easy to show, Brendan. So this is this is just a short talk on what we've done since. Since 2000. Just talk about your book. We're excited about your book. Okay. Everything you've done in the last That's five absolutely. years. In you book coming out by the book. Was. Great. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is the book? Talk about the book. Everything you've done since the book you wrote at some. Since the book I wrote at some. You mean from one book to another? Okay. Yeah, sure. There you go. So my name is Brendan Gregg. Hi, thanks for showing up. Um, I left Sun during 2010, and I came to join and worked on cloud computing. I've done various things since then. I forget what. Fortunately, I have the habit of printing out work I'm, I'm doing and putting it <laughs> on the wall, so I can actually just point, walk around this and point at what I've done, if, if this, is the, this is what we're here for, to talk about what we've done since leaving Sun. So I've worked on visualizations, and um, this is visualizing the cloud. In fact, this is a picture of an entire data center. This is really cool because it's showing every single process that's <coughs> running and the parent-child relationship. It's got color coding for different types of processes. This was trivial to do because it's a data center that's running uh, Solaris zones or SmartOS zones. And so uh, performance, uh, performance observability for them is very easy. Unlike, say, Xen or KVM, we have to log into each instance to look inside the guest. We can log into just the machines themselves and see everything that's going on. So I've done lots of work with performance visualizations. I did flame graphs, which are really cool. These uh, CPU flame graphs, so they're showing uh, how, uh, what code parts are contributing to making CPUs hot. Can you explain how the flame graphs are, are constructed? Because flame graphs are now like a thing now. Flame graphs are now a thing. Flame graphs are in lots of different products. Um, I've lost track, but I've been putting them on my blog to try and, they're in like the default, the, the main profiling suite. Google has a variant of, of, of it in their Chrome developer -Rex. toolkit. What are they called? They call them flame charts. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's lots of different things. Um, it, it's appeared in lots of different places. So normally when you profile something and you're doing call graph or stack trace profiling, you get tons and tons of output. And it scrolls past the screen really quickly. What flame graphs do is visualize all of that data in one screen. And what I figured out was that previous visualizations tried to retain the um, time sequence for profiling data. So you can see the passage of time on the x-axis. And I realized that that really was not the primary concern when we're doing profiling. And so on the x-axis, it's showing the population samples. And then each layer shows stack frames. And when you look at a flame graph, I can visually see the wider paths consuming more of CPU resources. And the plateaus show the function that's on CPU. So these are great because I, I deal with lots and lots of CPU profiling data. And uh, I, I can, what would normally be thousands of screens of text, I can now process very quickly. I made these speaks with JavaScript, so they're interactive. And you can mouse over them and do things with them. Um, and it quantifies code paths. So just another <coughs> a, a visualization I worked on since then. What else have I got? I've got a. Uh, I did work a bit on our cloud analytics, more heat maps. Um, they're really cool. I did lots of stuff with Linux, as well as SmartOS. That's what these panels are on, and KVM performance. Um, this actually shows some work I was doing with. Uh, oh, you have to throw yourself. Don't I, throw I, yourself. I know. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I have to say it. I, I spent so much of my life doing this that if I'm to accurately say what I did in the last three years, I have to mention System Tap. So. I became an expert in system tap, and there's a whole bunch of system tap output on the on actually pasted on the wall, like literally 10 feet from where Brian sits to, to troll him every day. Uh, one day he'll, he'll be torn off by the cleaner. You're much more trolled by this than I am. When Brendan first went into system tap, I'm like, oh, this would be interesting. Kind of like, you know, Brendan's going really brave of mind. Yeah, had you had to use system tap to debug what you were debugging. Yes. Um, and you know, we'll see how. And then it's like it, when Brendan, when the experience was awful, it was somewhat empowering. Like for the first maybe like hour, it was like, all right, this is empowering, but I didn't really need to be empowered by it. But by like day five of this, it's like, Brendan, just shut up already. Like, I get it. It's awful. It's awful. <laughs> it's, it's add another minus V. <laughs> it's, it's something that on, on the surface you think, oh, well, that looks like a bit annoying, but it's, it's, I'm sure it'll be fine when you actually sit down and use it. And when you use system tap, the best way I can describe, like, I love dynamic tracing and Theoretically, I have nothing against system tap. It's great. I get to do dynamic tracing on a different kernel. I love it. I should be a big fan of it. 
but it's just so disappointing when it doesn't work and it crashes the system. It's, it's, I feel so let down. Wait, what do you mean by crash the system? Well, Are you it's a good like question. Full, full blown panic or just like things hang? Or like sometimes full, full, full blown. Like? Sometimes. <laughs> well, you know, I'd like to be able to choose. Sometimes <laughs> things like freeze. Yeah, you can't make forward progress and you have to go into the terminal. So it does. It's depend. like medieval medicine. And you may find out what's killing the patient, but you'll probably kill them in the process. True. <laughs> as part of this, as part of System Tap, I learned how to use um, crash dumps on Linux. And I also <laughs> learned how to use GDB. And there's a really great article on crash dumps. And I actually did my first crash dump analysis. And so all these things you get to learn if you actually want to be serious about System Tap. You're going to be serious about crash dump support, filing bugs with Red Hat, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> um, so System Tap, dynamic tracing. Um, is disappointing. I'll just love it to work. It actually gave me a renewed appreciation for what Dtrace actually accomplished, and that was safety and production use. And it is so important. And you realize this when you use something that's kind of similar, and it just, you, you, I cannot, I do not run system tap on custom systems because I'm too afraid of bringing them down. So I have to reproduce their problem in the lab and then system tap it there. Well, you also, you did a one failure mode that was so explosive under KVM, where I was, they, it was someone under the KVM door, I'm like, I, there, that's a KVM bug, fuck, it's a KVM bug, because there's no way, it was triple fault, basically. I'm like, it's not inducing a triple fault, so that's gotta be a KVM issue. And I went through all the tasks of getting it up onto actual bare metal, and then it, it, and it, it's, it's a triple fault reboot. It's really not, yeah, you know. Yeah, it's, it was fun. I guess the best way to, to summarize my experience with system tap would be to say, Let's say I told you I've written this great new editor. And you're, you're trying to use this new editor. It's like, and you're told it's really popular. It's just like Vibe, but it's written by another company. You'll love it. And you go to use it. Everything seems fine. You like you save the, the file you edited. And then the first time you go to copy and paste some text, it crashes. And you say, what? Like, copy and paste doesn't work? And you ask the developers, and they say, oh, yeah, you're the first person to try to do that. <laughs> and you're like, like, what? Like, how can... So yeah, that's like system tap. And it's like some of the bugs I filed, it's, it's like when I was just profiling CPUs and just profiling the stack traces, and it's like, you're the first person to try this. It's like, I, I, I cannot get my head around this. This as isn't actually really being used. So uh, anyway, not to disparage system tap too much. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I haven't I had to see what you have to say about a product you didn't like. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. But, uh, no, it's, it, it was part of helping solve the problem. So it was the trace, it was KVM, it was really interesting. But the last thing I did was, um, oh, I also came up with new visualization frequency trials. But the what other thing... That Edward Tufte said was awesome. Hey? Edward Tufte did say Yes. True. It's, he said one of them was awesome. Um, I think it was... It's just hard to remember which. It was, it was the, 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 yeah. I think the two greatest <laughs> accolades for joint engineers this year are Tufte complimenting Brendan um, and then Brewer complimenting you, Dave, under a cap. The Dave had a, a write-up of the cap trade-off for Manza, the Brewer compliment. I'm pretty sure the Dave took his pants off the credit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I was not there. So the last thing I did was the system's performance book, and it's in five volumes, volumes one to five. <laughs> That's because the publisher, they said they've got a problem when they're binding a 6,000 page book. As, as it turns out, you can't put that many pages together and glue it, like it falls apart. It's not 6,000 pages. It could have been 6,000 pages. I'd love it to be 6,000 pages, because I wouldn't have to have spent so much time like collating and summarizing. As it turns out, the, the last chapter ends at page 635. So it's only one book. This is the... the prototype covers, the cover mostly looks like that. Um, systems Performance Enterprise in the Cloud, it covers Linux and SmartOS, the, Sol the Solaris family of operating systems, and uh, is an up-to-date reference, does performance, really cool. It's coming out next month. It's being printed right now, somewhere in the US. There are printers that are, that are printing it out on paper and putting covers on it. Cool. I'm trying to use it with Solaris 11, and the system calls are all coming out. <laughs> so if you do a blog post on this, it's annoying. In the book, I have to say, so 
Here's two choice one lines, these are all sweet. Except if you're on slash Oracle Slash 11, <laughs> where you have to run this alternate. Can the Oracle please designate an apologist for this, by the way? So Roger. Was that? Roger. Roger. No, that's on the apology, that's an explanation. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Oracle can mess up the Cisco provider and they haven't fixed it yet. They could fix it. Now they could fix it. So It's not fixable. It is fixable. <laughs> yeah, it fix it. The Detroit book, which is printed out on paper and can't be changed, yeah. at least that would work. Yeah, if only reality could change to match what's in your book. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. Please change so reality. <laughs> because, like, hey, my stuff's on paper. You can't change my stuff. Your stuff's just software. Just change your software to match change the book. Change it back. Right. Change it back. Right. So um, yeah. that's what I've worked on since I've left Sun in 2010. Cool. Thank you.